Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Jay Strovey here with realagriculture.com and we're here for another episode of The Wheat School and I'm joined now by Dr. Brian Bears of AAFC Lethbridge. So today we're going to talk seeding, specifically ultra early seeding and the research you guys are doing on that. So why don't you give us a little bit of a rundown on the research that you're doing here? Sure. Um, so this, this idea concept was inspired by a trip down to Montana um, in 2012 where at the end of March... Uh, I was going down for a wheat stem soft fly meeting actually and on the way as soon as I crossed the border we would see um, a lot of farmers conditions were conducive to that that year where they were already in the field going um, and this was wheat these were wheat fallow systems so you know they were in there with wheat and I thought you know that's that's a good idea because I grew up as a farm kid and I know um, we've got roots in Fort McLeod and ready made and there there have been times for sure where you know, we could go, but we were sort of held to this idea that, you know, as long as you're in by May 10th with your cereals, you'd be fine. And that always kind of revolved around um, insurance purposes. So, so I thought, you know, what about an ultra early system for wheat where we could go in and see and understand what are the risks of going real early and, and deviating away from these calendar date um, prescriptions and instead using a prescription based on soil temperature. And so, so that's what we're out here doing today is we're, we've set up a, a series of, of experiments where um, we're going to use soil temperature as a trigger um, to get out and start seeding. And so today we're, um, Matea Pittman and Stephen Simmel, um, we're out here today checking the soil temperatures. In this study, we start at zero degrees C. And, um, and then at, at incremental levels, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, um, those are the triggers and the levels of what we're going to be studying. And we've, we're entering now, I believe, our fourth or fifth year on this. All right, so over those years, what have you seen as a result of this? Well, it's actually been quite a surprise. Um, the, uh, the, you know, the old recommendations would, would sort of have you going into, the, in, into uh, conditions um, once soil temperatures reached a point where you could ensure germination and so obviously you're not going to have any germination at zero or two per se necessarily um, but the risk posed by going in that early is is actually minimal to none once you start at two degrees there's some risk at zero and that's more I think around not so much the seed interaction with cold soils but just the implement if you're going with a knife opener like this and there's still a bit of frost on the ground you might rip up boulders and not get good seed to soil contact but from two degrees on that and we're looking seeing a sweet spot of about two degrees to six degrees is where we get optimal yields um, no risk um, and honestly if we wait wait until the recommended um, soil temperatures of say 10 plus degrees to go in and start you're actually in some cases some situations seeing a yield drag all right so how does the research relate to available varieties well, that was the other aspect of this because we were, we were, we were wanting to understand how do genetics um, interact with with cold soils with different um, management tactics, and so um, we actually teamed up with Dr. Rob Graff, our winter wheat breeder, and he had developed what he called cold tolerant lines, and these were basically just winter wheat lines with with the uh, vernalization response removed from it, and and his thinking there was he wanted a spring wheat type winter wheat that he could swap traits in and out of because he doesn't have the luxury of, of spring wheat breeders to have a winter nursery to multiply um, uh, seed production. So we used his lines and compared it with conventional. Um, the reality to date though is the conventional varieties that we have now in the CWRS class um, and we were using Stettler um, and we tested it everywhere from down here in Lethbridge, Alberta all the way up to Dawson Creek uh, BC and into uh, Edmonton and, and parts of Saskatchewan and the fact is Stettler did just fine and so I think that's kind of a credit to the breeders and sort of the in environment we have in a short season northern latitude that the they basically are bred and have to adapt to um, colder climates and, and I think 
we're seeing an artifact of that in this in this response of the of of a registered seed address variety versus a cold tolerant line. All right, so you mentioned that you do have this trial running in several several different areas. Have you seen the difference in response regionally? Well, you know what we're seeing is that, and and we have um, um, folks up in Dawson Creek who are who have really bought into the idea that that it can work up there, and so it was successful up there. It's basically been successful at every site we've tried, but with the understanding that it's not going to work every year, right? Because you have you have years where you're just going to end up later, but there's conditions at every site, um, multiple conditions where we've been able to get in early. And so if we're using that soil temp as a trigger and looking at what we've experienced down here, for example, in year one, the trigger, the date corresponded to that soil temperature trigger was March 6th. The following year, it was February 16th. The year after that was a late year. So we were moving more into April today. We're at what March 27th or something like that, and we're we're good to go. So um, it just shows you how how unreliable adhering to a calendar date can be, as opposed to letting a soil temperature sort of guide you and and, and indicate when to go. All right. So you hinted at this a little bit, but um, what can farmers do with this with this research? Search. What should they do with it? Well, they could adopt it right now, um, and so you know. There, there's, there's perhaps a tendency of, you know, if, if, if I went in too early and it was, for example, mid-February, what kind of risk would that pose? And, and the reality is we've observed no risk to spring wheat. And I think part of the reason of that too, and some of the work we've done on seed treatments is obviously we're recommending at the same time, you know, you're packaging that seed, that variety with a dual fungicide insecticide. And, and the reason for that isn't necessarily to defend against pathogens or soil-borne insects it's those those for example compounds in in our neonics um, which have been getting a bit of a bad rap lately the reality is that they actually change the metabolic pathways in that wheat plant such that it becomes way more resistant to abiotic stress so they're going to be able to withstand um, that those cold temperatures those cold weathers and and a good example is that um, I believe it was the it was either the March 6th or the February 16th date. I mean, right after we planted, we had a solid month of real harsh conditions. It snowed on those plots, froze solid, and the reality was it was it was just fine. All right, good news for farmers. Thanks a lot, Brian. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Mm -hmm.